can't believe people go to that church. It's I like see that. nothing Christian about Flatiron's church. I am church. so saddened by They must pull in an absurd yeah, amount of that money. Church is weird. There will always be haters. They trash that Flatiron's cult of worship. Orange sticker Christians. For sure the Lord yeah, will. Flatirons. There will always be fear and doubt everywhere. Both of the congregation. The worst the comments music, were from Christians. At a rave. So why do we do what we do? Why do we put so much effort into every week, and especially so much effort into celebrating Easter? That's no place in church. Because without Easter, there is no celebration. Father, we're so thankful for just who you are and how you loved us, and not just that you love us, but that you love us so much um, that you sent your son for us. And so we want to be able to honor that. So don't let creative things get in the way of the heart and the passion that you put inside of us. And so I just pray for this process. I pray for all the steps it takes to make that day happen. We love you. Amen. Amen. So the one thing we want to walk out of here with is three words that help define the essence of Easter and three words of what we want people to experience or feel when they walk out of the ground. My hope on what to get out of this meeting is that we have this umbrella like art direction that includes some adjectives and maybe some digital styles that all of our individual ideas would fit under. You guys get three votes. Um, home, celebration, right, hope, Inspired deep feelings. Does that feel good? We could do some type of visual something. Welcome home, and then switch the N, M with the P. Welcome hope. Oh, I like that. That's it. I have to say it. As we're trying to welcome people and we're bringing all this energy, there's lights that are starting to flicker. What are the brightest freaking lights we could put behind it, and like it reveals that like light shining through? Big rays. Yeah. Extend the stage out. Highlight the tubs. I think we can play with a ton of color and then like really bold, impactful text. There's like some type of puzzle that's coming together that's kind of like what life is about. Mm -hmm. I think it's just trying to think about the people that we're targeting in our mission all the time. And that would, I mean, that's me 15 years ago. One of the key pieces is, is that you can relate to the thing that you're seeing. It's not that it's like, oh wow, it's so different. It's like, I see myself in that. For me, the light, hope, and inspired would be like our main things. So like when we're coming, when we're coming up with ideas from here until Easter, like try to make sure that they stay within that box. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. If we can extend this out, there's hot tubs all over the room. We get like plexiglass. What if we put the tubs underneath those graded decks? Still trying to figure out where to put the light. Sometimes just leaving here at work, I'm either mentally drained or physically drained or emotionally drained. So I've had to kind of readjust sometimes when I get home, when I pull up in the driveway, I've just kind of taken a second to reset a little bit and know that like the, my family inside wants the best for me. They, they deserve the best of me when I get home. Hi. My wife and I grew up in uh, Orange County, Southern California actually met in high school. We got married in 2014, and uh, a couple years into our marriage, kind of felt like the Lord was calling us away, so we moved to Northern California. Yeah, we were there for six years. We moved there with zero kids, and we left with two. And so we moved from there to here four months ago. Hi, my name's Tyler Kaneshiro. I'm the uh, production director here at Flatirons Church. And then we do stairs yeah. here and stairs here. Yeah, basically. Yeah, our production team at Flatirons is made up of a live yeah. video team, audio team, lighting team, and then I'd say like a staging kind of team. Yeah. I just want to see how the eight, 16 feet feels, and then we can remove this for now. It's my first Easter here, but um, just have, you know, we our team came together and had the idea of how do we, is there a way to rethink how we've always done it? Let's take the next couple baptisms and try something completely different. Yeah and figure out what's better for the people in the seats, what's better for the people walking through the tubs. I actually, I don't feel a ton of weight individually. I think it's, um, if, if there is weight that I feel, it's that um, I wanna make sure we're, our teams are working well together and in a healthy rhythm, that um, 
we're serving volunteers well, that we're serving each other well. Either we'll go over there or we figure out like, Put it right there. Just put it in that corner? Yeah, let's put it in that corner. What well, will usually happen from that kind of first brainstorm meeting uh, to Easter weekend, we'll go through, we'll take some ideas that we kind of brainstorm and actually start looking at what are some tangible things we could take away from this and start putting together some set designs. How is the stage going to look? The worship team will put together some music sets that might support um, and some themes that might support the themes we talked about. We're trying to weigh out all along the process, what's worth it and what's not worth it. So during baptism, it'll just be a barrier instead of stanchions, basically. I think it's worth trying. I think when it comes to Easter, we know that there's gonna be people visiting who uh, maybe only come once a year, twice a year, maybe three times a year. Welcome to Platter. And we get the opportunity to speak to them or get the opportunity to help influence where they're at in their faith journey. And so when it comes to Easter, there's one aspect of it's where there's a big celebration of what's happening. Welcome, happy Easter. And so we just, as Christ followers, are excited about celebrating that. Um, but secondly, knowing there's gonna be people visiting here, we get the opportunity to help craft moments um, that might speak to them a little bit more. So let's go Denver. The way our churches are set up, our campuses are set up, the experience just space-wise is just much different at Lafayette than it is to our other campuses, which in that difference in space, we're trying to figure out our, the best way to create a similar experience. Denver gets a little bit less just because of power reasons. Yeah. Alex, we did it. <laughs> the West design, that will definitely help out a lot too. Oh, cool. Because I can, we can throw yeah. that real quick. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Band, two, three, four. All in. I don't know, with lighting, you feel emotion. So we try to draw emotion with lighting and try to capture that emotion through the, through the lights. That's our, always our goal is to create environments where people can find God, bump into God. How do we create similar moments and craft similar moments that our campuses can participate in. Aurora, these ones are gonna be though, these ones are gonna be kind of like, it's hard to tell, but like West, they're gonna be all the way to the front of the stage. Okay, so, so they a can little do more like side a little sidewash. Side oh, I love that. Look at that, Alex, some beams. Beam me up, Jesus. It'll look slightly different and it might have different wrapping paper on it, but it'll be the same thing happening everywhere. Long, long, long. not last. The month is what they call it. Goodness gracious. There's a mic there. <laughs> oh yeah, these lights are gonna be great. You just gotta watch the brightness because they are bright. I, I love getting a chance to do not only what I do, but who I do it with. I think like this team's great. Love serving under the leadership here at Flatirons. Um, love the people of Flatirons. So, um, yeah, it's been great. Like, I was gonna say let's start the next song, but I just wanna clarify what we're doing. Yeah. yeah, I think without Easter, we don't have a faith. If the resurrection didn't happen, uh, we don't have anything. We don't have any hope, we don't have any purpose, we have no direction. And so, it's a big deal to celebrate because it means everything. So, without Easter happening, there's no, there's nothing else. Brandon, Luther, do you want them lined up on the outside walls like always? They're going to line up on the outside walls. The lines will begin in the back of the auditorium. And there will be two flags, one on each side, and that's where they line up. All right. And then come down the sides? Yes. All right. This is the, the one chance, the one opportunity that I get to address people who normally they're not going to set foot inside of a church, but for some reason, Easter. Um, either as a favor to their mom or their grandma, or they lost a bet, or she won't date me unless I, I come, whatever that is, is that I have one shot to present the, the gospel of, of, of what Jesus has done. Easter is a picture of that, um, but his whole life was to come and seek and, and save people who are 
disqualified. Either religion has disqualified it or they've disqualified themselves. And I get a chance more than any other weekend of the year to say, God doesn't hate you. He loves you so much. He sent Jesus to you and come as you are and, and, uh, and welcome home. So I love Easter. There's a day we all get to stand before Jesus. I just want you to picture that moment. Because it used to scare the hell out of me because it's not going to go well. He's going to look at me and go like, really? That's what you did with all the chances and all the opportunities. That's, that's the best you could pull off. You know, go to hell. That, I mean, that's kind of this imaginary conversation. And then when you think about the prodigal son, still covered in crap, just going, but what about my father? And he goes, he starts home and boom, the, the father's there. That's what it's going to be like when we see Jesus. And, uh, and, and most of the people that are going to sit in these auditoriums have no idea. They think God's mad at them and they wouldn't blame him. And we're going to tell him that he's a loving father and there's a homecoming waiting on him. And, uh, and we all get to pay, pay a part of that. Holy Spirit's going to do what only he can do. Jesus has already done whatever he can do. But now he's, he's saying, hey, now partner with me in sharing the gospel. The people can get saved this weekend. People can get healed. They're going to get forgiven. They're going to be set free. And that's because you guys said yes. Guys, I'm nervous. We look beautiful. Does anyone have any tequila? Hi, I'm Lindsay, and I am senior graphic designer here at Flatirons Church. Hi, I'm Hallie, and I'm a graphic designer at Flatirons Church. I thought it was like separate takes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lindsay, and I'm senior graphic designer here at Flatirons Church. And I'm Hallie, and I'm the other graphic designer. <laughs> and I'm the other. <laughs> They're like, you guys are the worst I, people we've ever I, interviewed. I, I, I would describe Hallie as someone who is a really hard worker. She is on fire for Jesus, and I see that come out in her work all the time. And she's just really fun to work with. I would say Lindsay is everyone's biggest cheerleader. We definitely have very similar personalities in, we're both creative, but we're both also pretty type A. I never had a big sister, I was always the older sister, and so like Lindsay's like a big sister to me. I think Flatirons is so different. I felt it the first time I stepped foot in the church. I was like, this place is real. And so I think that runs through the DNA of Flatirons and that includes the creative department and everything that we put out. Yeah, that's really cool. I what it means to be a creative and be a successful one is to have the ability to listen to someone else's vision, right? We're a support team. We're supporting all ministries, all campuses, and we're supporting the weekend messages. And so if we have if the ability to listen and to really almost re read minds, I say that I'm a mind reader all the time because you have to be able to hear really what they're wanting. Could we make that look like gold yes. if we wanted to? Yes. I think the way it will translate in the room is gonna be really cool because I'm imagining a big moment during worship when the screen goes white yeah. and whether it says Easter or something else on the screen um, in this effect, I just feel like it'd be really impactful. So the process of designing for the series at, here at Flatirons Church is kind of crazy. Jim is just a really visionary leader. He's very passionate about what his talks are going to be about. And so that's where we start. Is it more lighthearted and funny? Is it deep and introspective or is it supposed to be motivating? And so that's kind of where we start. Um, and I think it's, it's our job to take those points and those talking points and Bible verses and all the things that he's going to talk about and translate that into visual design. And so we may design something that the average person isn't gonna look at that and say, oh, that makes me feel really introspective and thoughtful, but it does, they just don't know it. I don't mind this white look. I think it pops mm -hmm. and I think it looks sick. So our current design for Easter, I think the cool thing about series designs is we get to be a little more, we can be a little more relevant, look at current design trends. Um, and so that's kind of where we came up with the chrome effect that we're using this year for Easter. There's definitely an element of where is it coming from in the teaching. Cool. I feel like it could be a little more warm. We're talking about the lost coin, um, and so that's kind of where we got that metallic element. Could you lay rings underneath it? And even the like light and softness is kind of coming from our theme for Easter, which is hope um, and inspiration. And so that's kind of where the light comes into play, um, but really the metallic chrome is uh, kind of trendy right now. Um, it's something that not a lot of people are doing, and so we used the elements from the talk and tried to combine it with some relevant design trends right now. 
a lot of it is collaboration between us first. Like Lindsay will do a couple designs, I'll do a couple designs, and then we just kind of unanimously agree on one that we feel like uh, creates the vision the best. It's really important in our process to get a lot of external feedback, mm -hmm. which can be difficult to hear sometimes, but in, in all honesty, especially for this Easter, it was really crucial because this text effect is a little bit risky depending on what background you put it on, and so. Does it look too hip hop? Yeah, some, mm, yeah. It was just good to get all of the opinions um, and then we can take them or leave them. And yeah, so I think that's a huge part of the process as well. Awesome. Great work. Easter and Christmas are important because there's lots of people walking through Flatiron stores who maybe have never been here before. They're maybe coming with family. They don't know Jesus. So this might be the first time that they have the ability to bump into Jesus. It's our job to create an atmosphere that they feel comfortable in and that they don't feel out of place walking into. So whether that's like a really cool graphic that feels edgy and not churchy, or whether that's a song that they recognize from the radio or whatever, I think that's like, that's, that's part of what makes Easter and Christmas such a big deal and why it feels like there's a lot of pressure around it is because there's gonna be so many people that walk through these doors and we just want them to find Jesus. Let's give it up for them. Welcome. I'm really, really glad you're Yay, here. Yay, we did it. Did we do a good job? Should we do the intros again? <laughs> Here's the intro. Hi, I'm Hallie and I'm a graphic designer at Flatirons Church. And I'm Lindsay and I'm the senior designer. <laughs> What are you going to the boss now? <laughs> hey, you feel good? That's great. This is going to be so, so good this weekend. Yeah. Are you, are you filming? <laughs> that's my job. Yeah, that's my job. <laughs> Most of the stories that Jesus told and, and the teachings that Jesus had were in answer to questions from religious people who thinks Jesus shouldn't be bothered with uh, people like that. And so, um, they think Jesus should be about religion. They think Jesus should be about um, the righteous. Jesus, Jesus should be about that. Jesus said, I didn't come for the righteous. I came for the sick. I came to seek and save the lost that, that religious people lost. And so I think that if we're going to get accused and criticized of, of things, I hope it's for the same things Jesus was criticized for. He accepted people that religion thought was unacceptable. He loved people that he thought were that other people thought were unlovable, and he welcomed and said, "The kingdom of God is open to you, even though everybody in your life is saying you're disqualified and God doesn't want anything to do with you." So, if you're going to criticize Flatirons for why do you hang out with people like that, I'll take that all day long. We spend every dime on it, we spend every ounce of energy on it, and any time that we get off track on that, we get called back to that mission. Does that bring the awesome life of Christ to people living in? really messy world. Camera speed. All right, ready and action. We are out here in downtown Denver about to film the special video element during the song Run to the Father for Easter. All right, stop. DJ, stay there. You're going to walk across there when we cue you. All right, let's do it again. Go a little faster. We're trying to depict the story of the prodigal son in kind of an abstract way where we don't want it to be too obvious and um, we're kind of going along with the lyrics of the song, Run to the Father. And right, uh, we're hoping it's kind of like an introspective moment and an unexpected moment of the service. And maybe it'll get people to think about baptism and maybe kind of keep that concept of like they're never too far gone and that you can always start over and come back and so maybe that concept will be in their minds at the end of the service when we do baptisms that's the goal at least that's a wrap for day one <laughs> i think that might be a wrap for today day two of shooting we are about to film our baptism scene um where we show him literally getting baptized it's kind of the the turning point of this video. You good? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Up. The that was great. I try to like get myself in the in the headspace of like thinking about that one person who's going to be in this in this room in a couple weeks from now, and like thinking about how might this production be that like push over the edge to kind of like. Maybe maybe that's the thing that 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 person needed to make that next step, uh, the biggest step, really. So that's, that's where my head's at. Now run. <laughs> now run. 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 Now run.
run to the father. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Yeah, so we're about to do the final two shots of this video, which are gonna be the most complicated because there's a lot of movement involved, and it's gonna be quick, and it's all gotta look sharp because it's kind of the moment of the video. Okay, let's run this. Ready? And action. How you feel? <sighs> Quite chilly. <laughs> Change this from food block. All right, it's a wrap. One, two, three, four. And that starts it, right? That's where the voiceover yes. and any time after that, that's where it starts. I feel like I've been running my whole life. I guess it's what I do best. Everywhere I turn, nothing is familiar. My heart is really your sight Long before my first breath And running into your arms Is running to life from death I wish I could go back. the back pieces out and put them alongside the second the other piece so you almost like have like a loss there really i think so too i think splitting the band and the singers feels a little bit more intentional yeah. unless like we just threw guitarists yeah. on the side yeah. and are we doing a couple of the singers are we all on the front thing i love you lord Oh, your mercy never fails me. My favorite moments at church are singing worship songs together. I love being in a room of people that are saying, hey, I'm, I'm following Jesus and I'm running after him. Your goodness is running after, it's running after. Come on, we say. Camera C, camera that one. That All one. right, I'm going to put my arm around. Uh, here we go. Hey, guys, I'm Nate Manning. I'm a worship pastor at Flatirons. This is my wife, Janae. Um, and happy Easter. Is that what I was supposed to say? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Do you want me to do it again? No. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, good morning, Flatirons. How are you guys doing this morning? You sound great. Thanks for singing with us. We've had multiple people come up and it's like, oh, what's it like being married to a celebrity? And I'm just like, ugh. But I say, he's just as stupid as the rest of us. But I mean it in the best way because he's human and he wants other people to know he's human and a man of yeah. God, but yeah. kind and sweet and funny and dumb and all the other things. Yeah. He doesn't put away his laundry. He stinks at making food. You know, he's just normal. I pretty much just wanted to play in the NBA. <laughs> it's all I wanted to do as a child. And it was way too late in my childhood when I realized that wouldn't happen. I was probably 24, <laughs> so I'm joking. Uh, so mostly I just wanted to do that, and then I, I come from a, like our family's pretty musical. I grew up playing some piano and singing and doing that kind of thing in our, our small church that I grew up in. Uh, <laughs> good job. I always look at my family as like my number one priority, my ministry, my what I get to do. When I got married and when I had kids, it's like, I feel like there's been such like a good focus. Like God's gone like, hey, this is, this is actually what you were made to do. This is what I called you to do. This is what I created you to do. He's singing at home worship songs around the house and he goes down to the studio with the kids and makes music and 
that's his life. Like, that's what he loves to do. I can say out loud, I have the head knowledge, yeah. Jesus is the king of my life. Um, but for me, I have to fight this resistance in me that's always there. Um, the part of me that says, no one's the king of my life. I'm the king of my life. I think like what's important when we worship and when we gather together isn't to, to you know, clean up, clean ourselves up and show up to worship. I actually think um, when I'm leading is I take whatever that is, like the hurt and the pain that I'm walking through currently and bring that into that space and go, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not showing up here feeling great. I think that's when like true, deep, and like healing worship happens is when it's like, I'm gonna let you look at like kind of the dark closets in my life, you know, and I'm gonna take those into this space and I'm gonna, I'm gonna worship through it and focus on Jesus. I think the question, cause we're on a bit of a time crunch con yeah. compared to Christmas. Right is depending on what that moment's gonna look like on Run to the Father. The two weeks leading up to, to Easter are like us trying to put it all together. And you know, that can sometimes be very smooth and sometimes it's not as smooth. <laughs> this is the son mm -hmm. of a welcome prodigal, hallelujah, intro. Bing, 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 bing. Hopefully, hopefully this one goes really nice. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens. We love you, we trust you, we give you this whole weekend. Um, and we just pray that it glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're a Christian, Easter's a big deal. It's kind of the big deal. Yeah. And to be honest, I love going all out, you know? And it's like, let's celebrate. One, two, three, Easter! Quite comfortable. celebrates and memorializes the greatest day in the history of the universe. Easter is what sets Jesus apart from any other person of all time in any religion or faith system that has ever been. And some of us have checked out different ones. Jesus is different. Uh, it's the biggest event in Christendom, all right? My, uh, some of us are gonna know uh, Christmas is a bigger deal than Easter, isn't it? No, it's not.
Lots of religions celebrate the birth of their founder. Almost every religion out there is the birthday of, you know, Muhammad or his birthday of who, right, right. All right so, and, and we certainly recognize the birth of Jesus was unique and different, and we, and we blow it out at Christmas around here. But, but the truth is, when it comes to birthdays, we all have one. We all got born. So everybody has a birthday, okay? So all religions have birthday, right? And, and lots of religions celebrate the teachings of their leaders. And again, we do that every weekend around here at Flatters. And lots of religions celebrate and memorialize the, the, the death of their leaders, okay? Only Christianity, only Jesus, and only Easter celebrate, ready? The resurrection of, from the dead of our leader and our founder, which is what sets Jesus apart and the Christian faith apart, apart from all other faith systems, because our leader is not dead, he's alive, amen? Amen, come on. So God, in this moment right now, this Easter Sunday morning, this is our day of resurrection. Your specialty is taking even the worst, deadest, stinkiest parts of life and giving new life, breathing new life into them from above. That's what Easter is all about. All things are possible because Jesus rose from the dead. So anybody here that needs to hear that message that's not too late for them and that God wants them back in his life and he wants to be a part of their life, today is the day of salvation. I pray that this Easter morning in the name of Jesus, amen. Let's go, here we go.